May 2025. Along US coastlines, thousands of unexplained sonar spikes, mass fish strandings, and metal-on-metal -metal sounds ignite a scramble. Coast Guard patrols surge, yet officials call it routine monitoring. All eyes on US coastal waters right now isn't just a warning. It's a record. Off Florida and the Carolinas, the water is literally boiling. Sensors are flashing red, and no one in authority is offering raw answers. What exactly is disturbing these depths, and how far could the consequences reach? Just after sunrise off the coast of Fort Lauderdale, a commercial trawler's sonar alarms blared without warning. The waveform on the main console spiked in jagged, unnatural bursts, far outside the range of any known marine life or vessel. On the radio, a deckhand's voice crackled with urgency. It's back. Big. Low. Moving fast. I've never seen readings like this. Minutes later, a wave of fish erupted from the water's surface, scattering in all directions. The water above the anomaly churned, sending up clouds of foam, and what witnesses described as a faint, metallic rumble. A few miles north, a charter fishing captain filming with his phone caught two green lights weaving beneath the surface. The lights darted through the murk, then vanished as schools of fish fled in tight, panicked formations. Within the hour, social media filled with uploads, boiling patches of ocean, mysterious underwater glows, and a low, resonant hum that seemed to vibrate through the hulls of nearby boats. Some videos, time-stamped and geotagged, showed sensor readouts flashing red, with sonar signatures that didn't match any known ship or submersible. Onshore, technicians at a coastal monitoring station watched their node readouts spike. One technician, a veteran of hurricane seasons and red tide events, noted the difference immediately. This isn't weather. This isn't algae. The whole array is lighting up. Something's moving down there, and it's big. The system's low-frequency sensors picked up a series of slow, pulsing vibrations, each one strong enough to rattle equipment racks. Fishermen along the Carolinas reported similar scenes. Inlets that were calm the night before, now boiled with bubbles and foam. Some described hearing a deep, mechanical grinding from beneath their boats, followed by sudden mass beachings of fish, and in some places, dolphins. Even seasoned mariners admitted they'd never encountered anything like it. The raw, unfiltered evidence, sensor logs, frantic radio calls, and unedited video clips spread quickly, raising questions no one on the water could answer. NOAA spokespeople stepped in front of cameras with carefully worded statements. The cause, they said, was natural. Thermal mixing and pressure anomalies in the water column, a seasonal event known to disrupt marine life. Reporters pressed for details, but officials offered no sensor logs, no raw sonar files, and no technical briefings. The language remained measured, almost rehearsed. We are monitoring the situation closely, one official repeated at a June 2025 press conference, sidestepping questions about the scale and speed of the disturbances. The Navy, facing a barrage of inquiries about increased patrols and exclusion zones off Cape Fear and Tybee Island, denied any connection to classified operations. Rear Admiral Lisa Park, speaking from a naval base in Virginia, described the stepped-up activity as routine environmental monitoring. When pressed about the sudden 12 nautical mile exclusion zone and the surge of Coast Guard flights, she offered no operational details, only that the exercises were standard procedure for the season. Requests for incident reports or hydrophone data met with polite refusals. For reasons of national security, we cannot release those records at this time. Meanwhile, federal agencies distributed restricted data notices to regional research partners and university labs, advising them not to share unvetted acoustic or electromagnetic readings with the public. Official briefings referenced only summary findings, omitting timestamps, coordinates, or any mention of the more dramatic anomalies logged by civilian observers. The effect was immediate. While the public statements projected calm, the absence of concrete evidence and the refusal to release even basic data fueled skepticism. Online forums, science blogs, and local news outlets began to question why, if the events were truly routine, so much information remained behind closed doors. The mismatch between the official narrative and the scale of the disturbances was now impossible to ignore. A single hashtag, Hashtag Ocean Mystery surged to the top of trending lists overnight, 
drawing in millions of views within hours. Clips of churning water, streaks of green light, and sonar screens pulsing red appeared on every major platform. One video, filmed from a pier in Myrtle Beach, logged over 2 million views by noon. In the footage, a low-frequency hum vibrates through the phone's microphone as the camera shakes, capturing a patch of sea that boils and then abruptly calms. Comments flood the post. Some users claim it's a hoax, others upload their own footage, each with a timestamp and GPS overlay. Forum threads on maritime and fishing sites fill with side-by-side -side comparisons of sonar images, some annotated by retired sonar techs. Experienced users highlight GAE. Slow-moving shadows that don't fit known vessel profiles, mapping their paths against exclusion zones and recent Coast Guard advisories. Amateur analysts use open source tools to verify metadata, cross-referencing upload times with NOAA and Navy public logs. Discrepancies spark even more speculation. Map overlays begin circulating, showing clusters of anomalies along the Atlantic coast, especially near Cape Fear and the Florida Straits. Viral analytics platforms report a 400% spike in posts tagged with underwater disturbance keywords since early June. The scale of grassroots data collection becomes impossible to ignore, with thousands of independent uploads forming a mosaic of evidence, some credible, some questionable, all demanding explanation. Citizen recorders, armed with smartphones and portable sensors, now compete with official agencies to define what's really happening beneath US coastal waters. Long before hashtags and viral videos, the US Navy was listening to the deep. In the early 1950s, engineers laid the first cables of the sound surveillance system, SOSUS, across the ocean floor. Designed to catch the quiet hum of Soviet submarines, these hydrophone arrays stretched from Newfoundland to the Bahamas, and later along the Pacific as well. Decades of classified recordings flowed into coastal command centers where analysts sifted through the low frequency noise of the sea, searching for patterns that didn't belong. Most of what they heard could be explained. Whales, earthquakes, the distant clatter of shipping lanes. Yet the logs also contain references to unexplained contacts. Slow, powerful vibrations or rapid moving signals that left no trace. One case stands out. In 1997, Noaia's hydrophones in the South Pacific picked up a sound so loud and low it rattled sensors thousands of miles apart. The event, nicknamed the Bloop, lasted less than a minute, but sparked years of debate. While later studies suggested collapsing ice shelves as a likely source, the sheer scale and mystery of the sound kept it alive in oceanographic lore. Declassified Navy records from the Cold War era mentioned dozens of similar anomalies. Unidentified contacts logged off the East Coast, some tracked for hours before fading into silence. Today's digital sensors are far more sensitive but the legacy of SOSUS endures. Each unexplained signal from the past offers a yardstick for what's considered possible and what still lies beyond explanation. The ocean's history is full of echoes, some still waiting for answers. Along the continental shelf, a chain of instrumented boys quietly logs every fluctuation in the water column. On July the 3rd, 2025, Analysts at the National Data Boy Center flagged a cluster of readings from stations off the Carolinas and the Florida Keys. The surface temperature at several nodes spiked by 2 to 4 degrees Celsius, far exceeding the slow, predictable rise expected from seasonal warming. These jumps occurred within minutes, not hours, and then settled just as abruptly, leaving no trace in the meteorological or tidal records. At the same time, Magnetometer arrays embedded in the same buoys recorded short-lived electromagnetic surges. The data showed transient increases of 15 to 20 nanoteslas, well above the usual background drift caused by solar or atmospheric activity. These surges did not match patterns from known geomagnetic storms, nor did they align with regional lightning or power grid events. The records stood out for another reason. The anomalies appeared almost simultaneously across sensors separated by dozens of nautical miles, suggesting a moving source or a coordinated disturbance beneath the surface. Specialists accustomed to sorting through routine calibration errors and sensor glitches found little to dismiss. The data passed internal checks, 
with calibration logs showing no faults or outliers in the hours before or after the spikes. Analysts overlaid the buoy records with satellite and shipping data, searching for explanations. No seismic tremors, no active survey vessels, no military exercises logged in the vicinity. The pattern resisted easy classification. When mapped against previous years, the July 2025 anomaly window formed a sharp deviation from the norm. The combination of sudden temperature jumps and electromagnetic surges, unaccompanied by storms or known human activity, left researchers with a data set that defied routine explanation. For those tracking the story, the numbers on the screen offered something more concrete than rumor or hearsay. A hard to dismiss technical signature, logged in real time and awaiting answers. Marine biologists from Florida to the Carolinas began logging a spike in distress calls and hotline alerts by mid-July. Rescue teams scrambled to barrier islands and estuaries where the tide left behind clusters of dolphins and small whales, some still alive, many already dead. Local stranding coordinators described the scenes as unprecedented for this time of year. In interviews, they pointed to the timing. Each event clustered within hours or days of the recorded underwater disturbances with no storms, red tide or ship strikes to blame. Tissue samples taken at the strandings told a troubling story. Lab reports documented ruptured organs, disoriented navigation and abnormal air in swim bladders, symptoms consistent with exposure to intense acoustic shock. Scientists noted these patterns matched previous cases linked to sonar or underwater blasts, but the cause here remained unconfirmed. Commercial fishing crews reported their own crisis. Trawlers working out of Charleston and Port Canaveral saw their catch drop sharply. Some boat captains called it the worst midsummer haul in memory. Preliminary survey data from state agencies showed double-digit percentage declines in local biomass for key species like menhaden and croaker. Fisheries scientists cautioned that year-to-year -year swings were common, but the scale and suddenness of the drop, concentrated in the anomaly zones, raised alarms. On shore, processing plants cut shifts as deliveries slowed, and some crews docked early, waiting for conditions to stabilize. Environmental organizations, including Oceana and the Ocean Conservancy, released joint statements pressing federal agencies for transparency. Their demands cited both the ecological fallout and the mounting evidence of mass acoustic interference. Marine NGOs called for a moratorium on high-intensity sonar tests and deep-sea mining until independent assessments could be completed. While some officials pointed to natural upwellings or shifting currents, the clustering of strandings and rapid catch declines kept the focus on the unknown. For coastal communities, the cost of mystery was now measured in stranded mammals and empty nets. Ocean scientists and technical analysts have spent weeks passing the raw data behind the disturbances, searching for patterns that fit established science. Oceanographers point first to natural forces, geothermal shifts and methane seeps. Sudden methane releases, for example, can send vast plumes of gas bubbling to the surface, disrupting water temperature and producing broadband acoustic signatures that rattle sensors and, in rare cases, leave the sea boiling above. These events have been documented in the Black Sea and off the Pacific Northwest, often traced by matching spikes in dissolved methane and sharp drops in oxygen. Yet the scale and speed of the recent anomalies stretch the limits of known methane events, which are typically localized and gradual, not sweeping and synchronous across hundreds of miles. Naval technology experts bring a different toolkit to the table. They review the sonar logs and point to the possibility of advanced unmanned underwater vehicles, UUVs, operating at the edge of what is currently possible. Congressional briefings and open source defense reports describe foreign and domestic UUVs with impressive range and stealth, but none confirmed to reach the speeds or maneuverability implied by the latest sensor tracks. The fastest known military submarines, like the Russian K-222, top out around 44 knots. Experimental supercavitating torpedoes can briefly exceed 200 knots, but they are loud, uncontrollable and not recoverable. Claims of 150 knot UUVs remain unsubstantiated by any peer-reviewed engineering record. Environmental scientists focus on the rising tide of ocean noise and the spread of deep sea mining. High intensity sonar, seismic surveys and mining detonations 
can all trigger acoustic trauma in marine life, explaining the patterns of strandings and die-offs. Still, the affected zones do not always match known industrial activity and the timing of the fish kills often falls outside scheduled survey windows. Each field offers a plausible framework, but none fully account for the scale, timing and technical signatures now crowding the coastal record. Online research groups and independent sleuths have pushed the conversation far beyond official channels. On encrypted forums, users post claims of deep sea sensors tracking objects moving more than 200 nautical miles in under 30 minutes, an underwater speed that outpaces any known submarine, military or civilian. These posts often include screenshots of supposed sensor logs, but the original files are rarely traceable and sensor locations are left anonymous. Some groups point to sudden gaps in automatic identification system, or AIS, data, moments when commercial ship tracking goes dark along stretches of the Atlantic shelf. Speculation runs wild. Are these deliberate blackouts to mask secret tests or glitches triggered by something powerful moving beneath the surface? Political voices have joined the fray. In late July, a Senate subcommittee requested a classified briefing on the unexplained coastal events citing both security and environmental risks. On social media, self-described analysts overlay civilian sonar maps with military exclusion zones, drawing lines between missing data and rumored drone incursions. A few claim to have intercepted radio chatter about unidentified underwater vehicles operating inside US territorial waters. None of these reports are backed by released government records, but the volume of speculation creates a feedback loop each new claim fueling public demand for answers. While some theories drift into science fiction, the boundary between data and conjecture remains clearly drawn. No credible, peer-reviewed evidence confirms the existence of underwater craft capable of such extreme speeds. The most dramatic claims, objects moving at hundreds of knots or entire sensor networks forced offline, are presented without verifiable proof. For now, these remain unverified, a reminder that the search for answers can sometimes outpace the facts. Between May and July 2025, US coastal sensors logged over 9,000 unexplained sonar anomalies and low-frequency vibrations, with the highest concentration along the Atlantic and Gulf coasts. Marine biologists confirmed four mass stranding events and a 30% drop in fishery yields, while official agencies attributed the disturbances to thermal mixing and denied any classified activity. Yet, no raw data or sonar recordings have been released, leaving a gap between first-hand evidence and government statements. Archival records show that similar underwater mysteries, from the 1997 bloop to Cold War Sosa's operations, have challenged researchers for decades. Today's unexplained electromagnetic spikes and acoustic interference echo those unresolved past events. While expert theories range from methane releases to uncrewed underwater vehicles, none fully account for the scale of recent phenomena. What remains clear is that the US coastline is under watch and key data is still withheld. The facts point to a deep uncertainty. Even with advanced monitoring, much of the ocean's activity remains beyond our reach.